Hey everybody, uh, it's Bust with Battles with Bust number 216, and today we're going to be doing Battle in the Gauntlet. And so, uh, this is our first uh, our first gauntlet of the, the 319 patch. As these new big balance patches come out, uh, I think we should always just stick by the same strategy as to where uh, you just play good decks, you know. There, there is a lot of excitement out there with the changes in the meta and everything and wanting to try new things. But, you know, if you're ultimately trying to be successful in this first week then you should probably just go with something tried and true. You don't need to be uh, dabbling with Reaver's Rotalia or whatever you think the hotness is this week. Uh, just play something that's uh, that's pretty straightforward and strong and good, uh, and it should hopefully be enough to carry you the whole way. And so with that in mind, this week we are going to be playing uh, Annie Swain. We're going to play Jinx Draven and Lulu Poppy. And so the kind of individual things with this deck, uh, Annie Swain isn't one that we featured on the channel just yet. We'll probably bring this up in the upcoming week, but uh, it's quite similar to the Misfortune Swain Pirates, but the addition is the aforementioned Reaver's Row. So the Reaver's Row cost one less coming out of the 319 patch, and we're using this to uh, tie in with the massive amount of one-drops that you are already playing in this style of deck. And so you're able to uh, kind of switch out that Misfortune for another high-quality champion in Annie. Uh, we have this gigantic collection of one-drops, the Rear Guard, Saboteur, Codger, uh, and then Annie and Double Trouble. And then you have the, the late-game package of, uh, of usual with the Leviathan Swain coming in to close out the games. And so this is our kind of like wild card for the week. I still feel pretty good about it. I like playing a good Legion Rearguard deck, uh, and I think this will be good for this week one of the Gauntlets. Uh, next one, this is Drinks Draven. We did a video on this one a couple days ago. Uh, not as exactly you would see the Jinx Draven deck. Uh, I don't like to play terrible cards like Jury Rig. I, I think you need to have uh, just a little bit higher card quality, and you don't need to be as all-in. Uh, as you see with those decks. And so we're not playing Jury Rigs or Arena Battlecasters. We're playing it uh, a little bit slower, trying to take advantage of more of the discard package and then tying everything in with the Darkened Ballista. And so uh, the Darkened Ballista plays uh, quite well in a deck like this. It has a variety of units that it's just extremely good on, whether or not that's boosting up a Poro for the additional damage, uh, a Flame Chompers to get a good uh, challenging attack in, or the the elusive, fearsome attacks coming out of the Fallen Rider. You have a lot of really great targets with the Darkened Ballista. And then as you're out here playing Jinx, trying to discard your whole hand, uh, it's very easy uh, to not have late game, right? We've cut out the Vise, we've cut out the uh, the Scions, we've cut out the fearsome 4-3 guy, <laughs> whatever he's called. I want to call him Turncoat Traveler. I know that is 100% nowhere near the right name, but Turncoat Traveler, not making the deck either. But the Darkened Ballista, it's good early. It's something we can dump out of our hand quickly, but if we get to that late game where we typically wanted a Scion or something, we can at least uh, drop this as the Naganika as well. And so been quite happy with this list. And last but not least, we're playing Lulu Poppy. Uh, this is our Demacia offering. Uh, it's still doing quite well with the nerf to both Relentless Pursuit and Golden Aegis, but uh, this is a really a uh, high-powered early game board control deck, closing out with the challengers, but then we're also using the uh, the Bandle City Mayor synergies across all of our multi-faction units, and then Paparo across all of our Yordles. And so uh, nice little bits of synergy you get out of the addition of Paparo uh, tying in with both Lulu and Poppy with these three-cost uh, Yordle build-around cards. And so that's it. That's what we'll be doing battle with today. Uh, let's go ahead and head on in. So we got Reaver Zero Annie. Good job. We got Super Mega Death Rockets looking good. Yordle Me Timbers ready to go. Head on into battle. Okay, I've been checking. I've been doing good. We got sound in this one. I <laughs> I, I messed up in the previous video. I recorded the whole thing. Uh, I got to doing some work at the end and then realized there was no sound in it. And so sorry, sorry for that letdown. Maybe you actually enjoyed it in silent mode, though. But all right, so what do we have here? With this, I'm just looking to ban Vayne, right? Uh, I think Jax Orn is probably pretty manageable. Uh, it could cause some problems for our Demacia-based rallies deck because their units just tend to be bigger. But otherwise, I think it's going to struggle with both of our Nox and Offerings. And then kind of the same deal with Evelyn Kaisa. It's going to take her quite a bit of build-up time before I care about the units. If they spike a Lifesteal along the way, good job. But outside of Lifesteal, I think we're pretty strong against it. So... Uh, we'll take the Vayne down. She's quite good against all of our strategies. And then here, I feel like a little bit more confident in our Demacia deck. So that's the one uh, I'm going to lead out with if we have the option. Okay. Jax and Orn. You got it, my friend. You're going to have to watch out for that... Uh, 
that Udir spell, right? I, I think that's what everyone's really excited about. It seems like garbage to me, not going to lie. <laughs> but uh, it, it, granted, it is a powerful ability giving uh, units everywhere plus one, plus one. So here we have a decision. I'm leaning towards just taking the shield. I, I think we need to uh, potentially use it with the Broadwing and potentially use it to protect our Poppy. Getting this plus one attack shouldn't matter with this board, right? It's kind of relevant given that... Uh, G given that if we like grow a unit with the wandering shepherd that unit's probably not going to grow with the poppy after the fact but i i think i'm still okay with that it, uh, I'd, I'd rather be survivable survivable here as we have this hand with the uh the Aegeuses and the like okay so it goes time and dedication that's okay we can wandering shepherd uh the bird that can be our way to uh uh, that that can be our way to, to allow Poppy to still boost the squad. All right, that's a that's a forged Jax. You got it. The, the the perk for this next turn is everybody we have combats really nicely with him, and so we'll have to we'll have to see how opponent responds to this delightful curve into a Poppy. I don't think Hookmaster is the answer. This looks like a troll chant, which is, uh, which is completely fine. He's gonna win the combat with Jax onto the Broadwing. It's not gonna kill anything with the Hookmaster, though. Well, I guess he can kill the Yordle Squire, but that feels like a win to me. Not a problem. All right, so it looks like we're in a good spot to just pick up some board here and go for round two next turn. I'm, I'm on board with that. This Jax is slowly becoming problematic, but and dude's not playing Demacia, right? So we don't have to worry about rallies. We don't have to worry about tumbles. It's going to be you know, a bit of time before this Jax can actually do something scary. All right, I guess we can take a spear here just to, just to mix it up a little bit. I, I fully plan on adding the combat cook, boosting Poppy with something, and then uh, seeing where we stand. What do you got? Do you want the Overwhelm? I was hoping to get a point of health here, so if we attack with Poppy uh, and the, the one health from the equipment, she'll have six and then be able to survive through a uh, survive through a combat cook, but the Overwhelm is pretty tempting here. We, we still have this mana to uh, put the shield onto Poppy. Kind of count on this to uh, be her, her path to victory next turn. All right, so as as the new decisions roll in, do we want to add a Yordle Smith? Uh, the the quick attack here seems okay. I don't think I'm super excited about it though. the 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 problem that we run into with this board is if our our Poppy gets blocked by Jackson, then he has a a a double heal, whatever it's called, the double uh, frostbite thing, the Varus frostbite. That starts to be fairly problematic. I think we just need to open attack here and then see if we can't respond uh, after the combat with another unit in a rally. Alright, so we cleared out the scary part of his board. That's nice. We're gonna have to do a little bit more work here, though. Like, do we ever lose next turn? We're we're at a pretty high health total. If he plays Orn, I don't think we're super worried about it. Let's let's just give this a turn. I wasn't expecting to get out of that combat without um, without getting hit by a uh, a combat trick. So I guess the worrisome thing now is if he plays Orn and copies the Light of Acathia and then has the double Overwhelm units, right? He's forging other stuff now. 
Interesting. Easy there. This way, come along. Well, we can give up the Yordle Smith. We have another one to play in hand. All right. So this is the this is the scary thing going to battle with the uh, with the Jacks deck. What I was worried about where their units just get bigger than ours, and there's not a lot that we can do about it. I think we have to get like something happening happening with Poppy this turn. We the thing with Poppy is she can attack, and then she boosts all of your units. Tries to boost all of your units, uh, even if. Um, she doesn't get the level up bonus, and so I think we're just kind of stuck coming in with the Golden Aegeus, getting a Poppy attack in this turn. It's going to give her the plus one, it's going to give the Yordle Smith the plus one, and then see if we can't uh, make a little magic happen on the next turn. Definitely need a little magic here, though. <laughs> this is not good. All right, so we pick up another rally. This is not really good enough, is it? It's like we're in this awkward spot to where we, we can't quite boost our poppy uh, and give her quick attack in the same turn, right? We need, we need equal health or equal attack on both the smith and the poppy. And we just don't have the combat trick to take down these five power units. God, this is a disaster. Okay, well, I guess we can lean in this way, though. We can give Poppy quick attack either way. It's not a real exciting way to go about it, but I don't see too many other options here. All right, well, they both have six attack this time. <laughs> gotta, gotta hope that makes up for it. Wasn't enough on the... Yeah, that's the that's the problem card. Okay, GG. That was the one... That was where the, the game kind of went off the rails, right? I was expecting two turns ago he was going to drop the, the double Frostbite and then uh, move from there. Wasn't quite how I uh, thought those games were going to go. But that's okay. I think we'll be able to reasonably pick on this Kaisa deck. I uh, have in my head that it's just not very good. <laughs> I knew that the, the Freylord match was going to be a bit of a trouble uh, for our Demacia deck. But I think this matchup's going to be fine. All right, so what you got for us? We're on the odd attacks, and we have the Fleet Feather Tracker into Lulu. That's pretty good. Hang on to the Yordle Squire just to help us stay on curve, and then I'll get rid of the Wandering Shepherd. It's not uh, going to fit into the curve anywhere. I'd like to find another cheap play if we can. And I think we did this backwards, right? We should have been leading out with the Yordle Squire. If opponent plays a unit here, we're not going to trade. We want to have the Fleet Feather Tracker for next turn. Uh, but he didn't have a punish for us, so that's kind of cool. All right, and then a pretty good chance of making Lulu a 4-4 coming into this next turn. Hopefully we can take over this board. There it is. And he says, uh-oh. <laughs> bust, bust coming at me with the strategies. This doesn't seem good. This doesn't feel good. Alright, nice. So now we can add in Paparo next turn, have a pretty strong attack for uh, the following turn. Wandering Shepherd's reasonable as well. I think I want to save it for next turn. Let's lead in with Paparo and see if we hit uh, any interesting Yordles. Let us continue to stay on curve. Got a Bomber Twin in here. Not the Not the strongest, but... Getting a 2 and a 3 on board this turn is going to be good. Ooh, even better. Even better, Yordle Smith. 
So I'm going to try and hit the smith with an equipment now. I don't want the smith to have to be the unit we hit with Lulu if we want all of our units to get the uh, uh, to get the quick attack. So if we can get a plus two attack onto the Yordle Smith, he can give the whole team quick attack. Then we can still Lulu boost our Fleet Feather Tracker. Not amped about Lulu boosting because <laughs> this Evelyn's out here, but uh, I think this is still the way to go about it. We got the plus two attack and Panna Pain. Perfect. And so with, with Evelyn being as big as she is, that's nasty. Well, we're still bringing the squad. <laughs> Nothing we can do about that. Unfortunately, with the shield in hand, we have the, the plus one coming in from Paparo, but it's not enough to take have Lulu take down the Evelyn. But bring in the damages where we can. Take him to three. As long as we can dodge some kind of lifesteal shenanigans, I think we'll be okay. Oh, wow, they re they reworked all the husks for that Spirit Garden Evelyn. I didn't realize that. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool, Riot. Well done. You get, you get the FTP bust seal of approval. <laughs> it's coveted. People, people, people kill for that shit. All right, he did stuff. Evelyn has elusive, but she's not super scary. We should be able to get wider than everything he's doing here. All right, GG. Ooh, game three, final battle, round one, coming at you. You got to see if the if the Reavers Row Annie can hold its own against the uh, against the Kaisa Evelyn deck. I believe in us. I don't know how much you all believe, but I think I think we can do it. All right, so this is most certainly one of these decks to where uh, we, we want to be spending our first six mana on one drop. So I could see an argument in hanging on to make it rain. Uh, it's good against the Husks. It's good against, uh, like, the Betheldi Elders and the other one drops. But uh, I, I just, it's a disaster if we don't have the early plays. This is just way better here. Oh, come on. It'd take a kitty break. It happens, you know. It's a it's a thing. <laughs> but here we, we have a, a couple of concepts in leading off with the Legion Saboteur. Number one, if you don't know what units to play, just play the ones that do the most damage, right? And so if we uh, pick up a unit that deals three damage this turn, like our boy Legion Rearguard, we can still get it onto board and we'll have maximum damage happening. I know it doesn't entirely line up to matter with a board like this, but that's the, the concept that we're bringing. Then number two, we have some tie-ins with Annie as to where we can realistically get Annie to flip this game. And so uh, the Saboteur has a skill ability. If we picked up another Saboteur or something, we could potentially get multiple tick-ups on Annie here. So who knows what you'll hit with Double Trouble, right? right not a bad start. Salter was a, a pretty decent unit, but I think we're looking good. Rip Annie. That was pretty strong. All right, so how are we going to do this? If we want, we can next turn play Zap and then follow up with Double Trouble. I think that's probably the way to go about this. So we're going to two bank here. Hold on to the Krusty Codger. Next turn we'll play Zap. He's going to pick up a, a card, and then if the card you knows make it rain or something and we'd rather play it, we can still do it. But uh, I think we're going to want to, to just drop the double trouble. 
it should be useful in terms of cleaning up this board. It's a little unfortunate the Merciless Hunter has regenerate, but I think it's going to be strong otherwise. Get in there, squad. You gotta do those damages. Come on, bud. Oh my goodness. There we go. Kitty, you wanted to hang out. <laughs> yeah, this is tough. Like, I, I would feel so much better about this if this Merciless Hunter had literally anything except regenerate, right? If we could have cleared it out with Make It Rain, that would have been uh, exceptionally good. It's just not the space that we're in. Yeah, we can't kill the Bakais with it or anything. Sad day. All the Eye of Naga Kaboros. Warm your body, warm your soul. All right, so we're falling behind here. We need to just hit one of our big cards, and I'll feel a little bit better about what's happening. I think we have the potential to fully fill out our board next turn, so I am going to go ahead and block the... Uh, block the Forsaken Bakai. I don't I don't think getting some kind of trick to where we make a 4-4 tentacle is really going to get us much strength here. And so I'm more interested in just getting wider than opponent, trying to, to chip in these last few points of damage. Probably does matter if we have the damage onto Zap, right? He's been playing that uh, Void Shot, <laughs> whatever that one's called. And so... Uh, I think we want to protect just a little bit here from that. Make sure our highest quality unit and Zap gets to try and stay on the board. There it is. Void shot, as they call it. <laughs> All right, this is going to be a, a very tense make it rain. Let's see if it lands how we want. It does not. That's too bad. But the, the upside we have to this game, uh, opponents ahead on board, sure, but we have double Eye of Naga Kaboros in hand with two other spells, and he just has uh, one card plus the one he drew for the turn. And so he should be pretty far behind in terms of what's going on here. More than happy to throw the Leviathan in front of any of this stuff. Just whatever whatever it takes to prevent the damage. As long as we have time, we're going to win this game. We should have flocked in the middle of combat, though, right? That would have been that would have been a little bit juicier. A little sloppy, but again, I think we're okay. I think we're okay, bud. Big Daddy Swain on board here. Say, what's up? I'm ready to party. I lost a point of attack, but I'm still here. <laughs> GG. Good job, squad. My conflicts end only one way. It's distracting when you have all these kitties running around. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta stop and deliver mid-game pets. You can't expect perfect play when that's happening. But all right, what do we have going on here? Is Swain along with Jen? I, I'm surprised that it doesn't have Annie, but I guess that's some kind of mid rangey Swain deck, sure. Uh, Action Sivir is going to be the most on meta thing. That's usually what we look to go out and ban. Uh, I don't feel ultra scared about this deck, although I have been kind of tempted to try out Action Sivir along with the new uh, Challenger giving unit. Last but not least, the one that scares me the most out of these is Nora. Uh, our decks that just slam a bunch of units onto the board and try their best to, to, to get the damage in don't play well uh, against the Nora themes, and so she's going to be the one that we ban here. Now, out of these, I do think our discard deck is probably a little bit better than the Yordles. We're going to lead in with it.
All right, what do we got? Nice looking start here. We can Urchin on turn one, discard the Fallen Rider, play it on turn two or turn three. We have the Mystic Shot for an action. Looks decent. I'm ready. Our boy Legion Rearguard, that's what life's about right there. <laughs> I don't know how you feel about Legion Rearguard, but I'm in the camp that he's the best card ever made, so... <laughs> Y'all know how we feel about it. All right, an action end. We want to go ahead and try and spend the Mystic Shot on him. I, I mean, I think it's safe. At worst, we're just going to be trading a, uh, uh, trading a shaped stone for it. And then if it does work, it just feels like we're super far ahead. All right, I'm going to attack with everybody here. If he wants to take the value block onto the Zonite Urchin, I'm pretty sure I'm okay with it. I think the nine times out of ten, he's just going to block the big boy, the 4-2. And then if we don't attack with the Zonite Urchin, we're just missing out on that free damage, right? We're almost to that point in the game to where you just say, hey, I can't deal damage anymore. That sucks. Uh, and so uh, I, I think even if he took that value block, this would be the, the kind of space that we want. We're going to just pop off here, though. And hook this Sivir out of combat, make a big open next turn. Probably drop a, a delightful GG. Ooh, sub jinx. Alright, here comes the squad. Coming at you for 11. Gotta get excited in hand. I don't know about you, but I'm pretty excited. <laughs> Just boom them. What's behind this door, you think? Deadly traps, angry guardians, bunch of gold. Is that how we want to do it? We probably actually want to hang on to this, uh, hang on to the, the Reborn Grenadier. So if we roll into next turn, we can play Jinx, play the Grenadier, discard whatever we have, and then generate the Death Rocket. Whew. Cats. All right, here we go. Good stuff. Speaking of good stuff, I got I got some of this. I know I, I talked about it in the previous video, but it was all silent. They finally came in. Are you all familiar with these? Have you seen this? Does it work? There it is. It's doing it a little bit. Look at that. These are so good. I got a I got a three pack of the Neko wafers. It was uh, a little unfortunate to a degree. Like if this was your first time experience with them and you opened it up and there was a bunch of like broken ones in there, you would probably feel fairly bad. But that's just part of the experience, man. That's that's just uh, that's just the way it works to a degree. And so I, I expected it and it was okay. It's just like uh, reliving the childhood. And they're still good, man. I, I I saw a lot of the Amazon reviews and people were bitching about uh, how it doesn't. It doesn't have the same original flavor like it used to, and that is hogwash. I don't, I don't, I don't know what these people were talking about. That thought they were uh, just as normal and delightful as the originals. But here with this, uh, we were looking to get the quick attack challenge with our bird on the first turn. He denied it from us. That's okay. Now we're going to look to add in the Bandle City Mayor on this turn. We'll see who we get to add. Uh, Arena Kingpin is going to be our safest bet, just the highest quality unit. The next turn, since our Lulu is going to cost one less, we should be able to um, we we should be able to play her for two and then get a Broadwing hit in. Now the the fresh question on this is: Do we really want to hang on to our Yordle Smith for next turn? I don't think we care. You know, uh, the, this doesn't strike me as the kind of deck that's going to be dealing as much damage to us as say an Annie Jen would, but. Uh, we're going to have this Lulu hook for one unit. We have the Broadwing that should be good for a second one. I don't think we need to risk it. Uh, I worry a little bit about the uh, the burnness of coming out of Swain. And so I want to, to try and take care of that if we can. Gin in hand, that's okay. Stage hand is annoying, but whatever. We're still going to get pretty strong attacks in this turn. We'll just have to trade uh, our Fleet Feather Tracker for the stage hand. I guess, I guess we're just not getting any attacks in this turn. Fine, dude. It's but the the positive thing here is uh, dude's board is pure garbage. And so we got we got that one going for us. 
Do we want to go for a rally this turn? Probably not. Probably just go for the full board here and then uh, drop an Aegis next turn. More than one way to pick a pine cone, bro. Get ready for these opens. Okay, so... Yordle Smith to the left. Then we want to Lulu and to Bird. It's going to get quick attack. Everybody else. Now, our hooks are good. Everybody has quick attack and, and good stuff there. Do we want to make the, the Broadwing the 4-4, though? That's probably a little bit safer. If he has a Blade's Edge or something to, to weaken the Broadwing, I want to help make sure that it gets the kill onto the Sunhawk. That cats. Go! All right, what's happening? He's casting a spell onto Lulu. Sad day for you, but I think we'll make it through. We get to refill our board and then drop a uh, drop another rally. There's the Swain train. A little bit short of the lethal, but I think the attacks are too good to give up here. Night Swain, the ball is in your court. What you got for us? All right, the stage hand. You did something. I'm going to put the tiny spear onto um, the Bandal City Mayor. He's done his job at this point, right? Now, if, with him having the, the plus three attack, he can come in and block Swain. Maybe you want to give him the tiny shield as well. Just say, okay, you're our, you're our Swain blocker for the day. I hope you're, I hope you're ready for your, your job assignment. I, mean, I don't think this really matters, but we might as well protect through it. He's not going to lethal us here. As long as we can, like, block Swain and not have Swain AoE our whole team, then we're going to be fine. Got to watch some movies. What are these? What do these things even do? What happens with this? We block. We lose our dude. What's this Jin do? Does two to stun to enemies, which is the Kingpin in the back line. Why is our Vandal City Mayor dying? The Swain flip? Is that what's about to happen there? But still, at the end of the day, we've got our... What? I wish you could see what's happening. Okay, Swain's going up to four attack. Gotcha. Oh, does this do four to stunned units? It does two to stunned units. Okay, we're good. Now we get to get to keep our kingpin. Then we fall to seven. There shouldn't be any way for him to uh, to lethal us here. Right, with two cards in hand, he could deal six with two Noxus blasts, but uh, he can't deal seven. Not going to give him the chance to decimate, though. Here comes the squad. GG. All right. Victory to bust. Next battles. This is exciting. And so, uh, I, I will say... Uh, well, here we're, in, we're in here again. Uh, th with this... I, I've seen some note of this, like, Kane Tarek deck, I think. I can't tell if I'm thinking... I'm thinking of Kane Garen. 
there's still just like a ton of Frey Lord running across all these decks. I think we want to come in and just take down the Vayne, right? A opponent playing a 3-4 on turn three is just not something we really want to deal with this. Hopefully we can manage this like Senna Viego deck. Like it strikes me as just being some kind of like really off the walls control deck kind of thing. But uh, the, the thing that strikes me here is all these decks look pretty slow except for the Vayne. And so we can try and take it down. But no, but Riot, if you want to check out the Playroom Terra site, they put out a, uh, a thing, uh, some kind of November dev uh, announcement kind of thing to where they're starting to briefly talk about uh, the upcoming year. And they're wanting feedback on what you want to see in tournaments and competitive play and the like. Uh, I highly recommend going in and uh, checking that out if you want to uh, to to kind of give a give a look see, give a little look aroo at what's coming up and what's uh, gonna happen with the game. Uh, give your feedback; it's important. I, I don't like how they go about it. I, I really don't like that they've decided, oh, we're gonna do the feedback thing on Reddit instead of just doing a survey. But you know, you can only complain about so much, right? <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, I'm uh, I I'm hoping for the best in that sense, and hope things go well with it. But if you want your feedback, it's there to deliver on the Reddit. And uh, if you want to do a thing that Bust will appreciate, it's uh, you know read the read the thing, read what it says. It says if uh, you want to laser focus in on tournaments and buy-ins and. Like one other thing, they don't want to hear your noise on draft, right? They they said it right in the in the fucking text. We're not talking about draft. They don't want to hear your thoughts on Path of Champions. They don't want to hear your thoughts on cosmetics. Like it says right in the thing, and then you still start scroll through the comments, and it's like her der cosmetics and all this shit. And I'm like, fucking a. This is why I hate this stuff so much. Like, what do you, what do you, what do you expect to to positively come out of this nonsense Reddit conversation and uh, just it. It, it, it really uh, chaps my loins, if you will. And so <laughs> I'd, I'd prefer that they just not do it that way. But here we probably need to get in front of Esmuth, right? He's kind of problematic. It's just, does that really solve our problems though? If like opponent has three threes on the board, we probably just need to go for the units. Ah, <sighs> fine. Like his, his attack with the shepherd just isn't that good, right? We can still get the trade. All right, now on this upcoming turn, we still have to get excited to try and take down uh, take down the Esmuth. We can hook around uh, whatever his follow-up unit is with our dude over here. It's just the, the downside to this one is if he plays... Kane costs five, right? You can't play Kane here. Okay. I was going to say, if we get to, like, hook Kane with Flame Chompers and he gets the free strike and then gets to attack next turn and get the flips and everything, that's going to be a little bit problematic for us. But Kane, Kane costs one mana too many. All right, coming in for seven. Oh my god, more cats. But yeah, right, right. Asked for it. I've delivered. I I put up a uh, a, a bust response video yesterday. This one comes out on Sunday. The bust response video will come out on Saturday. I uh, give my, my thoughts and my feels out there. My my kind of thing is uh, I, I think Riot needs to kind of like pick a direction, right? They need to pick something and, and kind of stick with it. Uh, I think it was kind of okay at the beginning when they were like, you know, the, the game's new. We have to kind of get our footing. We got to figure out uh, what's going to work, what's not. And so you ran into a lot of this space to where um, there was just like, you know, there's Expedition, there's Constructed, there's Seasonals, there's uh, the Lab of Legends, there's Gauntlets, there's Singleton, there's all this stuff. They hadn't really, you know, gotten their footing on what they wanted the game to be and what the, the community was uh, all about and enjoying. But uh, I feel like they're kind of beyond that point now. And uh, if you say, hey, like, Magic, what's your thing? Then Magic can be like, oh, well, you can play this in paper with your friends. You can physically interact with other humans. Cool, gotcha. Say, hey, Marvel Snap, what's your thing? You can play a game in under three minutes. Cool, gotcha. Like, I get that. Like, you know, if you want to, to look at these various aspects of it, it's very easy to kind of say, have a mission statement or what the game is all about. There's Hearthstone. It's the first one. It's easy to play, but very complex or some shit. 
But, you know, again, like, what do you say about Runeterra in those terms? It's kind of tough to piece together because I don't think it really exists. And so as we've gone through this space to where there was a lot of openness to the game and then a shift to Path of Champions and Expedition was removed and then there was a... Um, hang on here just a moment. There was a... Uh, kind of kind of shift around and everything. Oh my god, fucking cats. Hang on. Go. Go. Nope, go. Ooh, trying to trying to make these thoughts and you got this cat. I want in, I want out, I want in, I want out, I want in, I want out. Okay, I think we've solved it. <laughs> but um but, but no, so the, the, you know, there was everything mixed in the game. They took out Expedition. They say, we're doing Path of Champions. Path of Champions gets nixed uh, for the we're going competitive mode now. They just don't have a lot of direction in where things are actually going. And uh, I think that they really just need to say, hey, the, this is what we're going to be good at. This is what we're doing. And um, you, know, you just don't, you don't see it. And so... Hopefully that they can come up with something like that. But otherwise, my, my second kind of piece is uh, I, I feel like they're doing the build-up to competitive play backwards. I, I think they've started... If, if you're going to look at the funnel of like how people get to, get to play in these events, right? There's Worlds, which has, I don't know, 12 people or whatever it is, 20 people. But there's like maybe 50 or 100 that funnel into it. Like That's a, a very exclusive group of people. Uh, as to where where does someone like uh, where do we stand right where do we sit if you're one of these platinum or diamond or masters low level masters players like we are like where do you fit in the world of competitive play you can qualify for seasonals but that's it and um, I, I I think that they kind of need to flip the switch and add in the low level tournament support as opposed to uh, focusing on the high level stuff because as you uh, as you may not know. Worlds is an advertisement. Worlds isn't here for the players. Worlds is here so that you can say, we have this $200,000 tournament, and then it gets picked up by like Kotaku or something, and they, they make a post on their front page or whatever, and that you, you get your, your game some visibility. It's not for the mage and bays of the world to go out here and make money, and it's not here for the Jason Florence of the world to get clicks onto their competitive site. It's so that these big mainstream media sites pick up that there is a large event and then get to say, hey, those large events here, we're doing stuff. How about you, uh, you know, get get the eyes on the game out there. It's, it, you don't get that if you make a, you know, five thousand dollar tournament. But if you make a tournament with a, a hundred thousand dollar payout, you have a lot more opportunity to get those eyeballs. And so, uh, I, I don't think that the, you know, the low level stuff exists and it's not there and it doesn't uh, get the visibility that it needs. Uh, to, to build up that competitive scene, that Friday night magic level of scene where the, the bulk of the players live. But here in this game, this has been a, a bit of a disaster. If you uh, watched our last video where we talked about uh, this deck, we, we're looking to um, just, just curve in the early turn, and we actually cut out some of our three drops to make sure that we would have extra options. Uh, in terms of early plays. Oh, this is a disaster. We were going double Bandle City Mayor so we could curve out lower, and then we missed again. Uh, but... Uh, uh, that hurts. That hurts. But no, there's not that, like, Friday Night Magic level of play where the, the big competitive base lives uh, to help support the rest of the game. At least in my opinion. I don't know. I don't, I don't have the numbers to look at, but... Uh, I think that Riot is currently missing out on that uh, that bit. All right, this was terrible. That game, that game just did not play out well. Oh my god, these fucking cats. Hang on. Make a decision. It's like the fourth time. There's two of them running around. One wanted in, you let him in, he comes in. The other one wants out because that one's in. So you let one out. That one sits directly in front of the door. Then <laughs> the, the other cat that's still inside wants out. You open the door, she looks, the other cat's laying right there. She doesn't want to cross the cat, so she jumps back in. Push her out. She comes out, claws on the door, wants back in. This is like the fourth time I let her fucking in in this video. <laughs> been here, been here 44 minutes. Okay, though. We'll recover. We'll recover after that nasty last game. Much more reasonable start here. Uh, a 1 2 3 curve always feels pretty good. No need to start with the Fleet Feather Tracker. We ran into this problem a couple of games ago, right? 
if we want to attack and trade on the first turn, we don't want to lose our tracker, especially when we have these Yordle Smiths in our hand. Nope, you're not sitting on my feet. Get out of here. It's fucking hot. <laughs> Kansas City is a nice and cool 20 degrees today, so you got the, the heat going. Can't have these cats sitting on your feet. It's going to get sweaty here in bust land. All right. Let's see how we can do this. We're going to get our 3-3 three, three on the board. Next turn, we're going to look to Fleet Feather Tracker and Girdle Smith. He shouldn't be able to attack into what we're doing because his units suck. <laughs> and then we'll see if we can't get a, a big attack going this turn. Got this quick attacking Fleet Feather Tracker. We'll follow up with Girdle Smith. Shouldn't be too much he can add to the board that we're worried about. Okay, not worried about him. Picked up a Darken card. Move, cat. Oh my god, you're pissing me off. Okay, okay. I think this is our answer, right? If he wants to play Taric next turn, I'm not super worried about it. If he has a Pale Cascade, it's not that terrible. Oh, he just gives up his whole team? Oof. Oof, gotta give that one an oof. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about that, Fam Jam. Poppy turns up. Beautiful. What do we ever have to worry about this turn? The, the the strike card costs four mana, so I don't think we have to worry about that. I'll go ahead and add Poppy. There is a non-zero chance that he just passes here, so let's keep our keep ourselves a little bit protected. All right, I suspect he's going to have some. Oh wow, did he just does he just disconnected? Is he given up? He's still here. I don't know. I don't know to what degree he's still here, but he's currently still in the game. Didn't have the strike? Hmm. I don't know, man. Alright. GG. We lost my train of thought, though. What were we going on about? We talked about Nekos. They're good. They're here. <laughs> we talked about the competitive scene. Riot needs to... Uh, they they need to pick something and stick with it. They need to uh, to to work on the low the low level tournaments. Uh, I, th I think that was it. Let's also go to talk about Marshall. We got another Marshall shirt on today. If you're not familiar with uh, We Are Marshall, some people will get tests that it's the greatest movie ever made. Uh, if you don't agree with that, you're you're wrong. But you know some people say that. Other people say that it's the best football movie ever made. Uh, also. Uh, true. Way better than Rudy, way better than Remember the Titans, way better than that movie with Sandra Bullock and the and the left tackle in Alabama. Like, all, all those movies are okay. Uh, we Are Marshall's the best one. The, uh, the, the plane crash, the anniversary for it's coming up, it is on Monday. It's on the 14th, and so it's a perfect day for you all to go out there and watch it. Uh, but here with this start, again, I worry about the, the Nora decks and their width and their blockers and us not being able to deal with it. Uh, so that's one we're going to ban. We're going to have to leave Vayne up in that sense, which is kind of scary. And we're also not that great uh, against the Gangplank Sejuani. This is a pretty strong lineup uh, that opponents bring against us, but give it a shot. I still think that that, that Nora deck's going to be the problem. You can maybe deal with it with, with, uh, with Poppy Lulu, but... If they're able to kind of like shut down your width that just goes real bad real fast. All right, got to find some ones and twos though. Much more reasonable here with the two, three, four curve. One of our few ways of dealing with a vein and having the, the Lulu and the Challenger. But yeah, this is a historically pretty tough match to, pa uh, to, to beat. Like when... When our things are going right, we're able to kind of come in and pick on their units and maybe take them down. But if we, like, look at this, we don't have a good attack into the Saga Seeker next turn, right? If uh, if we, we drop Lulu and Hook, there's a good chance he just makes it a 5-5. Five -five. And so we might just have to risk it. And so then where, where things start to, to go further wrong is they have this big giant unit building up. They give it Overwhelm and we block it with, like, a 3 health unit and still take 7. And... Uh, we, we then they tumble it we we block it and take six and we just don't have the tools to to really come in and take this stuff down very suspect play here though i'm reasonably happy to uh to just go ahead and make this trade quite quite suspect seeing this happen we don't have a like a great counter to it right ideally 
we would be able to to just drop like seven mana of units across the next turn. You just can't do that when you when you have three rallies in your hand at this point. But uh, that was very strange choice and in, in play there in the Cataclysm. The Lulu is just not that scary. All right, well, let's see if we can't build up a little bit here. So this turn, we are like 100% going to play Lulu, right? I think we can go ahead and add her. Uh, the The question we're going to have for this turn is what we do with this Yordle Smith. Do we need to get a plus one attack or a plus one defense? Because we're, we're probably going to attack Lulu and then into Poppy. Poppy's going to be a 4-4. Uh, and I th they, that attack will then make... Wow, wow. That attack will then make our next unit a little bit bigger, but so much tumbles. All right, well, I'm going to go for shield and protect Poppy here. Oh, Ooh, that doesn't work, right? She's going to become a 4-4 from Lulu and then... Oh, that's fine. She'll become a 4-4 and then up to 5-5. Five, five. Okay. So we can protect our Lulu this way. He's just going to have another Cataclysm, isn't he? He's going to have a fish fight or a Cataclysm or something and then just completely ruin this. Oh, okay. Maybe it'll be okay. We want to attack with the Squire. We can kind of just like leave it back. It still gets the bonus from the attack, right? Maybe we'll get something out of it next turn, not just directly throw it into Vayne. Still don't feel great about this. It's like, it's so easy for him to have like a catch. I'm really surprised he didn't have a fish fight or a cataclysm. Uh, but just a block with Vayne is quite good. Interesting. All right, well, we can still do stuff this turn. <laughs> we got we got rallies in hand. We can come in for some more big attacks. The question is going to be, do we want to go for, like, a, a Ranger's Resolve on the turn? So he has five mana up. Uh, I guess at this point he doesn't have Concerted Strikes or Fish... Or, uh, Concerted Strikes the one to worry about here with his five mana, but... He's he's played this so odd. I don't know if we can worry about it or not. But let's see, let's see what happens with Lulu here if she gets taken down. Hmm. All right, so we don't really get much now out of. Uh, well, I guess if if we want to get our our Poppy to boost our Lulu, we need to attack this way. Yeah, we have the the Rangers Resolve in hand, which make it something done. It's not it's not perfect in the sense that uh, a lot of these blocks out here. Okay. Um. Yeah, the, the, the block with our small unit just doesn't quite work, but this is okay. Take six, sure. Wild. So what happens if we open now, right? Lulu's going to flip and Poppy's going to flip. They're both going to get... What are they going to be? A 6-3 and a 7-6 only impact on Poppy? can rally once after. Like, if we want to spend eight mana, we can play a... It's like, do do we have the time to get the Shepherds going? It's like, the tumbles aren't that scary, but I think this is a good place to start. He's not big enough to deal with our Poppy is the big thing. And if he wants to take down Lulu, he has to do it with Vayne. All right, we got this. All right. 
Well, it feels a little better when they don't have any board. I don't know what we're supposed to do if he drops like Pantheon here, but at least at this stage, that feels okay. Camp four. All right. Alright, so it's got seven attack. We can attack with Poppy. Does that get us to lethal? So say we rally, attack with both, it's going to be six. I think we'd probably need to just bring it. Our Poppy's one short of surviving here through the camp four, but like if we go into the next turn, we're just definitely not winning. Like letting him do his game plan. So at least, at least this way we get to chunk in almost lethal. Ready, set, then we do still have the, the impacting Shepard next turn, more units and another rally. So we got we got some we got some shots after this. Alright, fam. Alright. Got him to one. Got an impact unit. Is it gonna be enough? Love to see him just spend a ton of mana on something that doesn't matter. <laughs> that's what that's what life's all about, right? All right, we'll go with the amulet off of this one. I don't think we're gonna be blocking this turn, but the the amulet lets us. Uh, potentially attack around like a Saga Seeker or something. He's pretty light on mana. I assume he's going to take like a Jeral into the Shepherd, which we get out of with Ranger's Resolve. Uh, and then we get to, to fight back with the Relentless Pursuit. Oh, we should have... We're a little short of that. All right, we got a Ranger's Resolve. Oh, it doesn't do anything now. Okay, never mind. GG. Oof. Yeah, We Are Marshall, one of the greatest movies ever. Matthew McConaughey, Kate Mara. It's got uh, Falcon <laughs> from uh, from the Marvel movies. You, you shouldn't recognize Falcon from the Marvel movies. You should recognize him as uh, as the, the wide receiver from We Are Marshall. It's fantastic. It's good stuff. That was, uh, that was a, a large portion of it was like filmed in Huntington. That's where, that's where Marshall is. That's where I'm from. But... Uh, that was that was moderately annoying. I lived like right across the street, so there's like the movie theater that they visit in in the movie. I worked there, and then I lived directly across the street. And so whenever they're filming, it's like I'd be walking home from class and being like, "I just want to go home." And they're like, "Well, we're shooting a movie," and it's like, "Well, I just want to go home." And they're like, "Well, you can't walk down the street. You're going to be in the movie." And it's like, "Well, I don't care <laughs> care about your movie. I want to go home and eat lunch." And it's like, "Ugh, ugh." And so they would send us like on a detour around the block and then down the alley and then circle around at the end of the building and let us in whenever they weren't directly shooting. It's like, well, all right. All right, I guess. But Explosive prime. made it through it. I'm still here today. <laughs> the, the Those big challenging moments in my life are over. All right, in with parlay. That's a little bit annoying. It's going just for the, the biggest damages that we could here. Uh, so with him next, Krusty Codger's fine. We'll see if we get trades or something here. Black Market Merchant, are you playing? <sighs> it's not something you typically see in Gwen Sejuani. Or, uh, or Gangplank Sejuani. I was wonder wondering if he's playing Powder Pandemonium and not playing the big Overwhelms. At, at any rate, this is just a disaster for us. Uh, he he spiked a one-cost unit, which isn't, you know, uh, it's not unreasonable for them to do against the deck that we're playing, but it, it's quite good in shutting down what we're doing, and then uh, we don't have any plays this turn, and so really kind of counting heavily on this Swain and Leviathan to do the work, and they're both pretty slow, uh, and both against a deck that you know has Frostbites in it, and so... Not really amped about how that's that's turning out. 
Now, if we want to play Zap, we lose out on a point of mana. I mean, I... Just doesn't seem like enough. Let's play the Eye. If we hit a couple of one drops off of this, that would be useful. <laughs> of course. Uh, useful and uh, execution are two completely different things, but this could still be okay. <laughs> that's the that's just the that's the way the day is today, huh? All right, we at least got two of them off of the board. But yeah, not what I was expecting. I, I don't know what's going on here with the... This is usually like a big overwhelm deck, right? And he has done nothing in that sense. And so it's a little a little bamboozled at what opponent's bringing at us. Okay, so now the new question is, are we ever in a spot to where we can flip our Swain? while hooking in the powder keg, right? I, 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 you, you get what this is gonna do, right? Swain's gonna have Overwhelm, we hook the powder keg and then get to AOE the opponent's team. Uh, if we're wanting to do that, we have to have the saboteur on board. Let's see what happens. If he plays a spell, this just doesn't work anymore. Or if he plays a removal spell, right? And, and blows up the powder keg. But if we get to attack right here, then we can potentially pull off this AoE. Yeah. This is no no fun for you. Keep up, keep up. It's in fervor. Well, I think we're back to this space to where we just need time, right? He's pretty close to flipping Sejuani, which is scary. I'm not as worried about a flip on Gangplank, but um, he's going to start to get the flips. This is be a little bit problematic for us. And then, yeah, he's got the he's got the half of malls. All right, I think this one's probably out of reach. That that opener was just way too good against what we're doing. Your king has All right. Returned. Get out of here, animations. Oof, GG. All right, well, now we got to go up against this scary-looking thing, this... Uh, this Freylord Senna deck. Oh no, it's back to Pantheon. Okay, maybe that's not so bad. I thought, I thought that that was the last opponent that had the Freylord Senna that was that was causing us problems, and so we might be okay here against uh, against Vayne. Depends on how much of that early game they have and how much of their our width that they can come in and just shut down. But we'll see what we can do. Okay, so we can hang on to Fortune Croaker, but I'm just going to get rid of it and look for another one drop. I'd really like to spend all of our early mana on it. Didn't hit, a little unfortunate, but the, the Croaker just doesn't play well into our opening hand here. But we get to start with the Saboteur. If it trades with a Saga Seeker, I think I'm okay with it. And then uh, if he doesn't go for the trade, then we just get an extra point of damage than we would with Annie. All right, the Reaver's Row turns up, but we don't have we don't have any more one drops. So how slow do we play this at this point? Oh my gosh, that's so bad. All right, well, I don't think the one bonus is enough to worry about. I, I think if we get out of this turn. Like forcing opponent to play a pale cascade or something, then then it's just a a, a real big bonus for us. That's not the bonus I was looking for. I was, I was hoping to leave a bunch of damage on this saga seeker, but 
I don't think playing towards, uh, like, the... I, I don't think just leaving our units back is ever the path to victory. Oh, this is just a complete and pure disaster, though. It's not... A, this is why we're playing like 15 one drops right <laughs> so that we can we can flood out our early turns with one drops and then just having one on two and nothing on three nothing on four is just a disaster but we'll see what the reavers rose can build up to he's got a, a few turns to uh he, he's got a few turns to actually put something on the board he hasn't really been doing anything here and so we might be able to pop off with with the, the second Reaver's Row and just have a ton of stats and width before he's able to uh, come in for damage. Those who kill innocents are no more than fiends. Do we have to worry about this tumble here? I don't think so. If we take six and fall to seven, we'll have two ones on the board next turn. Huh. Interesting. He's all about it. Maybe we'll hit a one drop off of our uh, our warden spray. You never know. Nope. <laughs> who, who would expect something to go right? Who would expect it? Double trouble. Good pickup though. All right. Maybe maybe we got something for next turn. bunch of elusives. <laughs> That's one way to go about it. Okay. So he's, got, he's got one tumble in him here. The, the one tumble would be lethal through the Saga Seeker, but... Let's see. Uh, come on. One drop. One drop. Why why do any of you expect something to go right with this game? <sighs> okay. Oh, he tumbles with Pantheon. Oh, he gets the flip out of it? Oh my god, everything is just going to go wrong with this, isn't it? Oh my gosh. <sighs> Here comes Lifesteal, watch it. Mm-hmm. Fucking insane. Okay, good job, I guess. I mean, it's not this guy's fault, this was... Uh, just a, a complete disaster of a round with our deck. Alright. We go up to 20, we fall to 1. Fucking insane. Alright, well, is there ever a world where we get some kind of kill out of the Leviathan? I mean, that's where we have to look. Oh, this is so stupid. <laughs> what a dumb game. Maybe, I mean, maybe we keep the Pantheon... At, if we keep the Pantheon out of the equation and then we drop a Zap, he lets us get up to, like, 11. He's just gonna retumble, though. All right. That's too bad. I mean, it, it kind of is what it is in terms of those games. Like, I, I feel like we actually got a really good matchup there in the Pantheon deck. But, uh, again, when you're playing something like this and you have... Uh, how much do we have? We've got 1, 2, 3, 12... Are we at 12? 12 one drops. And it, it, and then the double troubles take us up to 14. But just just having those turns is just a, a complete and absolute disaster like that as to where uh, you're, you're really looking to have that first 5 to 6 mana be spent on one drop, spending 2 on one drops, and then having nothing on turn 3 and then a turn 4 Reaver's Row. It's just a recipe for disaster. We didn't lose that game. Our deck just kind of kind of fumbled around and didn't get it. And so, nonetheless, this is our first shot with Annie Swain. There might be something here uh, as opposed to, kind of, you know, kind of moving away from Misfortune and moving into Annie and having the Reaver's Row. Uh, it really all just depends on the meta, right? It depends on whether or not there's a lot of challengers in the meta, a lot of quietus in the meta, a lot of ways to deal with Annie or how it's shaping up. But, you know, uh, every, every, every matchup can't be a winner. That was a little bit unfortunate there, drawing these... Uh, early game plays and having these starts with a bunch of leviathans in your hand is just, just not going to be the recipe for success. And so, well played, Chris. You, you took down the victory. 
Uh, I still think these are, you know, pretty reasonable decks. Uh, we've had lots of success with the Lulu Poppy. I think this is uh, a bit underrated in the meta right now. I think there's a lot of good things going on with it. Uh, I think uh, any lineup that you bring in this current format should contain Jinx. I was really surprised we didn't see any Jinx today. Uh, this is why uh, I say across all of these things, A, bring your good decks and don't do anything too crazy. Uh, and then B, don't try to get too wrapped up in beating the meta, especially out here in Gauntlet. Uh, just you, you, you're not going to, to run into the same decks like you would if you were playing seasonals or in, in a, like a, a competitive tournament. And there's no reason to be like, okay, well, I'm going to come in and target the Elusives deck, right? The Elusives deck is arguably the best deck in the format right now. Oh my God, are you kidding me? This is the fourth time, the fourth time with this fucking cat. You all get to enjoy it. Go. Jesus. <laughs> she claws on the door. You open it and she just fucking stares at it. These dumb cats are wearing off on her. That's the smart one. But no, nonetheless, right? There's no reason to target elusives. I think that uh, the, the Jinx should just be a part of every lineup in the current format. I think she is the, the strongest and most powerful thing you could be doing right now. And so whether or not you want to play uh, the list here like we are, I think that she definitely belongs in your lineup. Outside of that, you probably still want to be playing Vayne. I know that we are playing Vayne here, but that's probably uh, the, the best approach you could take to this format is playing one Jinx deck, one Vayne deck, and then something else. Uh, and I think that that'll leave you uh, pretty well and squared. Uh, if you want to play the, the Reaver's Row Annie deck, uh, by all means, I think it's still a decent choice. This isn't a bad time to be bringing like triple rear guard lineups as people are playing uh, very untuned decks, but uh, she was our downfall today. But nonetheless, I had fun with that one. I hope you did too, because that is going to do it for us today. And so I hope everyone enjoyed the video. Hope you maybe learned a thing or two along the way. I had a good time watching. Uh, this is Bustin. We thank you for being here.